so today the, the topic uh, of my discussion is uh, endangered species management in india and uh, particularly i'm going to focus uh, on tiger that uh, how actually we are able to revive the tiger population because it's a success story that within a span of uh, 20 years or uh, 18 to 20 years we have uh, revived the tiger populations from the uh, brink of extinctions so uh, being because uh, india as uh, one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the world we have only about uh, 2.4% of the land area, but have 8% uh, of the global biodiversity. With so much of the biodiversity, uh, it means we have some kind of enormous challenges and responsibilities to protect and to conserve this type of the biodiversity. And many other threats are also there because we have a, uh, about 18% of the cattle populations. That's also some kind of, we can say, uh, ne negative impacts on the wildlife itself. So it's, 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 it's kind of the threats and the issues that we need to address. That's why we are much and much talk about the endangered species management. And I can say there is a, then it's an X came in uh, 1972, the Wildlife Protection Act. It's, a, it's a, some kind of uh, conservation blanket on the Indian biodiversity itself. And uh, it's, it's a, we can say, provide a, some kind of umbrella legislations. If we talk about the uh, wildlife uh, enforcement in India, and why we are talking about the endangered species management and why we are talking about the, all these things, tiger and uh, all endangered species, because uh, nowadays, uh, because we are uh, in a six mass extinctions that the earth has ever faced. Uh, although we have uh, five extinctions already passed over us, and the most famous one is the Cretaceous, where actually uh, dinosaurs are wiped out. And nowadays, we uh, call them as uh, Anthropocene extinctions. Anthropos, I can say, uh, a man, because uh, uh, nowadays we are living in the age where actually uh, natural world is largely defined and uh, determined by the action of the human beings. Although we can say species do extinct in some way, but right now, I can say we are causing the sixth mass extinctions because uh, extinction rates there's a one study that showed that the extinction rates for today's mammals and the birds are 100 fold or 100 times more than the background road rate of the extinction in the earth history. So that's why we can say there was a crisis. There is a, we don't know in any kind of illusion. There is a crisis and because we are living in a, some kind of ethical time with a large development activities, there are drop. Okay. So uh, because uh, we are, uh, I can say, uh, living in a time where lots of developmental activities are there, a lot of change are there in the history of the earth. That's why we are talking about, that's why we are sitting here, that's why we are listening here regarding the endangered species management, because risk is very high. That's why we need some kind of management if we really want to preserve our biodiversity. So, uh, because I'm talking about the endangered species, let's talk about what endangered meaning is. Actually, uh, there is an organization, International Union for Conservation of Nature, established uh, in 1964. It uh, also gives a, uh, we can say, a red list of the threatened species. And uh, slowly and slowly, it becomes world most uh, comprehensive information. I can talk about the, regarding the global conservation status of the particular animals. And uh, it provides some kinds of, we can say, uh, are you seeing red list points are health indicators of the uh, world biodiversity red list is not only, we can say it's a uh, listing of the species, it is also a powerful tool uh, to inform and uh, to categorize the action of the biodiversity conservations. And uh, that's also very, very critical uh, for the protecting the uh, natural resources that actually we need to survive because we are not uh, going to survive. We are not believe our existence without the natural resources itself. And it's also provide a range of the, we can say information from population size, from habitat ecology, threats, conservation actions that are actually very, very helpful if we talk about the different conservation decisions that are needed for the protection and for the conservation of the particular species. And uh, these are the different categories that IUCN has put the species uh, based on the risk that they have in the wild. Some species uh, extinct and extinct in the wild. And we are much more concerned uh, about the species which are actually uh, categorized as threatened. These three categories, critically endangered, endangered, and vulnerable species are put in certain categories. And then we have a categories, I will talk about more about these in the next slide. Then we have a categories not threatened. 
actually the spe two categories near threatened and least concerns are put in the categories of not threatened and species which are close to qualify among the threatened categories are put in near threatened and species uh, the white specks taxa and one abundant taxa are put in the least concerns then other status is unknown status although because we have not explored all the biodiversity on the earth there were some species have data deficient some species have still not evaluated by the IUCN so, so these categories which or the status is still unknown has been put in data deficient and uh, not evaluated categories so the species of the concerns that I'm going to talk about today that the, is threatened categories those so these are the three categories that puts uh, IUCN in the threatened critically endangered endangered and vulnerable and based on the population trend, based on the geographical distributions, based on the population size and number of the uh, mature, mature individuals, and based on the extinction of uh, uh, probability of the extinction of particular species, the IUCN categorized the threatened species into critical endangered, endangered and vulnerable. And those species which are facing a higher risk of extinction in the wilds are put in the categories of the critical endangered, the lower endangered, and the uh, then the number one from the these two is in vulnerable categories i'm not going to explain all these things because otherwise it will take uh, uh, much time and, and i will not be able to discuss the topic we, on which we i'm going to concern so uh, uh, this uh, i can say uh, the assessment that i can has uh, uh, done uh, till date 41,000 species have been threatened uh, with extension that the iucn have evaluated mammals this one amphibians and types and birds so are you seeing also list uh, list 126 of the threatened Indian species of mammals in the categories of threatened categories like critically endangered and uh, endangered as well as well as a vulnerable species and many of these species that are you seeing put in the threatened categories are actually endemic to india and subcontinents and that's 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 a, we can say a special kind of the relevance for the conservation of the mammals in india because the species which are listed in the are you seeing at least in threatened categories are also endemic so they have a special conservation issues if we want to conserve the biodiversity. So these are some of listed some, some of the critical endangered uh, species uh, uh, of India. Please wait for a minute. So let's talk about the things that uh, how we can actually manage uh, the tigers how actually we can revive the tigers what happened let's talk about something about uh, tiger history that what happened that in the early 19th century we have more than uh, 40,000 tigers in india and uh, what uh, what the we can find that within the seven decades the tiger populations has decreased to less than two thousands and it was a very shocking news for all of us and for the for that period that how we are going to treat our national animal and because of a lot of criticisms lost uh, in the national as well as the international media the government actually takes some steps that how we can revive the tiger population in the country so the project tiger was launched uh, in 1973 uh, as one of the we can say uh, wildlife conservation projects and it was started from the jim corbett of Uttarakhand, and initially uh, nine uh, tiger reserves has been comes under the umbrella of the project tigers and in 1980s the number has been increased from 19 to 15 so an area of the uh, that uh, tiger habitats has also been increased uh, under the umbrella of the project tigers and what happened in 1984 that the, what the uh, agencies but the concerned uh, officials of the project tigers has realized as we increasing the project uh, uh, numbers in the project tigers the the numbers of the project tiger has increased above 1100 it means it gives some kind of the positive signs that if we add more and more area under the umbrella of the project tigers there's a the, we can conserve our, our, our we can protect our species so in the last few hours what happens that more and more tiger habitats have been added in the, under the umbrella of the project tigers and in 1997s we have uh, 23 tiger reserves and areas have also been ad added under the project tiger in india but after that what we have realized that although more and more area has been added in the umbrella under the umbrella of the project tigers but tigers population did not increase considerably that's the cause of the concerns. Although we are adding the area, but tiger population is still not reviving. And then came the very sad news for our, that in 2004, that uh, the nation has shocked that the tigers have disappeared from the Sariska Tiger Reserves. And this has later confirmed by Wildlife Institute of India in 2005 in his interim report that there was no tiger left in Sariska. And uh, by knowing of this fact, the government actually has uh, uh, given 
this investigation to Central Bureau for investigation to inquire what was the reason behind the disappearance of the uh, tigers in Sariska Tiger Reserves. And what the CBI revealed that from July 2002, the tigers have been killed in the reserves and the last tigers have been killed in 2004. And uh, Rising this, that how much threat the tiger is facing, even in the tiger reserve itself. So the Ministry of the Environment and Forest and Climate Change actually to revive the tiger populations uh, established a tiger task force in 2005 to review how we can manage the tiger population in the tiger reserves. And the main uh, task of this uh, tiger task force is to suggest the measures how we can strengthen the tiger conservation in the country. They also need to suggest how we can incentivize the local community, how we incentivize the local forest stops posted in the centuries regarding the tiger conservations. And they also need uh, to suggest that how we can improve the tiger methodology content. And they also need to suggest what will, what measures should be adopted for the transparent and professional audit regarding the tiger reserves, regarding the wildlife parks, and how we can put the data of tiger conservation in the public demand. And by on the recommendation of uh, this tiger task force, the National Tiger Conservation Authority has been established. And this has been established because uh, on the recommendation of, uh, we can say, Tiger Task Force and as well as the Sariska uh, uh, tragedy. And something I can say that some, sometimes uh, uh, bad thing happens for the good things. Because after the Sariska tragedy, the whole approach for the tiger conservation has been changed. And we have, that, that's the, uh, I can say, although the project tiger has been launched from 1973, but the real protection, I can say, the tiger gets after the Sariska tragedy. And then the first thing that there is the establishment of a National Tiger Conservation Authority and uh, as by the amendment in the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 in 2006, a separate chapter has been added. Regard, uh, and uh, there are two remarkable inclusions uh, in uh, uh, that's, that has been added through amendment. One is uh, uh, constitution of NTCA and another is a uh, wildlife crime control bill. And from that day, the NTCA is actually working or functioning as a special body under the Ministry of the Environment, Forest and Climate Change for the conservation and for the management of the tigers and the tiger habitats in the country. And it provides some kind of central assistance uh, to the state's tiger reserves based on the tiger conservation plans. And this tiger conservation plan is very important. I will discuss uh, uh, this tiger conservation plan in the coming slide itself. But uh, the uh, main thing regarding this tiger conservation plans, uh, the every tiger reserve managers uh, needs that how they are going to protect the tigers, how they are uh, going to improve the tiger habitats, how they are going to monitor the tigers day by day, and how they are going to involve the local people. Because uh, my colleagues, Dr. Sharad, already talked about that the, uh, the local people environment is very, very important for any uh, successful conservation plan. Initiatives and other things uh, that is uh, uh, the part of the tiger conservation plan that how we can uh, relocate voluntary relocation of the people from the core and critical habitats and how the tiger managers are going to address the wildlife human conflicts within the guidelines of, of National Tiger Conservation Authority. And another task of this NTCA is also to assess the status of the tigers as well as the propagators and their habitat once in four years using the modern techniques as approved by the task force. And another is Wildlife Crime Control Bureau because uh, in, after the Sariska tragedy, it has been found that uh, major threats to the tigers are poaching that is actually driven by uh, international demand for tiger ports and the products. So this uh, Wildlife Crime Control Bureau that I have already talked in the previous slides that uh, inclusion of NTC as well as the Wildlife Crime Control Bureau has been uh, included by the amendment. So it uh, actually helped to collect and collate the uh, intelligence relating to the organized wildlife crimes. It also assists the concerned authorities in foreign countries and uh, also the concerned international organizations how to facilitate uh, coordination uh, and universal action. And another function of uh, Wildlife Crime Control Bureau is to develop infrastructures and uh, capacity building for scientific and uh, professional investigation in the wildlife crimes. It also assists the state governments how they actually ensure the success in prosecutions related to the wildlife crimes. And uh, they also, uh, the function of this Wildlife Crime Control is to advise the uh, government 
uh, on issues uh, related to the wildlife crimes. And uh, this is the site of the Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. And this uh, has given that to, uh, till today, 154 convicts has been done in wildlife cases. And uh, the, I have just given the screenshot that no one is above the law. Even the Salman Khan has been also been convicted in 2018 in Rajasthan, although they are in, uh, he's in bail. But still, no one is above the law. And these all these heck, uh, thing happens after the establishment of Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. And uh, another thing that is uh, because I'm talking about the management of tiger reserves in India, that uh, tiger is itself, a, we can say, a, a conservation dependent species. And there are a lot of management efforts if we really want to uh, revive the tiger populations. And uh, to uh, know the success of any conservation efforts, uh, I can say it is very, very important to assess the how we can effectively manage the our uh, tiger reserves because uh, after the disappearance of the uh, tigers in the Siriska, so this uh, i'm talking about that uh, only declaring a protected area is not uh, you know and uh, we and it's not quite uh, adequate protections to that protected areas that we have uh, added in a category of uh, protections and for everything evolution is necessary as uh, the tiger reserves, we're talking about the tiger reserves or the protected areas, they are facing many threats. And uh, these evolutions, uh, evolution is not only simply way of looking at the problems, but it is also very important uh, things to identify when things are going good. And it looks, this uh, management effectiveness evolution, evolution of the tiger reserves looks both issues that are within as well as behind the control of the individual managers. And overall, this uh, ME of Tiger Reserves assists uh, in effective uh, resource allocations. It promotes uh, accountability and transparency. It also helps how we can go into involve the local community. And it also promotes the value of the protected areas itself. And uh, uh, India is one of, we can say, selected countries in the world that have uh, this institutionalized the uh, ME process under the project Tigers. And uh, the first uh, ME has been conducted in 2006 and the last one in 2008. And India has conducted this up to every four years. And I can say it is one of the most significant approach for Tiger conservations uh, and uh, associated landscape connectivity conservations and its management. And the first cycle regarding the ME of the Tiger Reserves was done in 2006, in which uh, 28 Tiger Reserves have been evaluated. In second, uh, in 2010, 38, 39 Tiger Reserves have been included. And in 2004, 48, uh, 43 Tiger Reserves uh, have been evaluated. And in last one was in 2018, in which uh, 50 Tiger Reserves have been uh, uh, evaluated regarding their different management practices in their Tiger Reserves. And uh, the WI with the uh, NTCA with the collaboration of the WI has framed with the, also with the uh, collaboration of the international experts has framed 32 criteria on the basis of which this assessment has been done every after, after every four years. And this is the report of the latest uh, uh, one that how they have actually ranked the different uh, protected areas. They have rated on the basis of the, these 32 criteria, they rate the uh, tiger reserve, particular tiger reserves uh, as uh, though those who scored more less than 40 percent as poor, 41 to 59 percent uh, as fair, and those who have be, get the scores of 60 to 74 as good, and those who have get uh, the scores of more than 75 percent as very good. And it has been found that the Pan Tiger Reserves has got the highest scores, and the most of the Tiger Reserves we can say are in a very good category, and the Dumpa Tiger Reserves. Uh, because in 2018, no tigers were, were seen in Dampa has been put has been uh, put in the category of uh, uh, fear. And another thing that is very very important uh, for the management of the tigers is that how actually we utilize the advanced technology in tiger management and uh, this M stripes monitoring system. Uh, for tigers, intensive patrolling and ecological systems is used uh, to that uh, is a thing that how that we can use the advanced technology in the tiger management because uh, we, uh, it has been seen that in tiger reserves uh, they have carried the law enforcement as well as uh, 
different ecological monitoring activities at a very regular times. But it was found that uh, the information generated to these uh, regular exercises was on an ad hoc basis and is rarely available to the tiger research managers. Uh, you know, in that format that they can take some kind of the decision based, based on the their regular monitors. And this M Stripe software has designed to address this gap. And uh, I can say it is a platform where uh, modern technology is used uh, to assist the effective patrolling and uh, assess the ecological status. And it's also very helpful for uh, mitigate the human wildlife conflict uh, in and around tiger reserves. And these, in these M Stripes, they have uh, three different modules. One is patrol modules, another is ecological module, and third one is human uh, conflict module. And in these patrol modules, uh, it, it, it maintains a special database of uh, uh, forest officials regarding their patrol tag logs, crime scenes. They also geotag the photographs, as well as uh, important observations they have uh, uh, collected during their day-to-day uh, -day or routine uh, patrol activities or patrol duties. And uh, this uh, app also allows the visualization of all the patrol duties in real time across the country. Uh, when the officials which have this app is in a cellular network connectivity. And it also uh, permits the guard to some, in case of some kind of a, uh, emergency, to send or to uh, geotag locations to specific phone numbers. And although this is not like that, they can only work with the uh, cellular network, but the mobile app also operate in areas where uh, without the phone network by using the uh, inbuilt GPS and preloaded base maps. Another is uh, module in this M stripe is uh, ecological modules uh, because uh, tiger reserves in India uh, after the refined methodology of uh, we can say tiger census after every four years uh, uses some standard protocols for ecological monitoring by field stops which include how occupancy of the carnivores, abundant estimations as well as assessment of the anthropogenic impacts and the habitat assessments and all these standard protocols uh, are now a part of the uh, ecological module stripes of this program. Another one is that's very, uh, we can say, crucial for the management purposes, that conflict modules. This, uh, In this case, the M stripes addresses data recording, they also geotagging, and they also uh, specially analyze human wildlife conflict incidences. And this uh, app has also a provision uh, for recording the details of the attacks on humans, attacks on livestock, crop damage, as well as uh, the property damage. And uh, uh, information on location uh, with special reference photo evidences and what the extent of the conflicts allows the, we can say, uh, wife of managers how, that, how they are going to mitigate the uh, conflict with some kind of the appropriate interventions because they have a data on specific with all the information they can take the appropriate decisions regarding the, in, uh, by assessing the information on these conflict modules of M stripes. And uh, another management practice is that uh, uh, I can say is reintroduction and restocking of tigers. Although uh, Dr. Shankar has already talked about this reintroduction program of uh, Sariska, I'm not going to uh, touch this again, but uh, it's, it's also a very, we can say, uh, uh, effective management tools uh, that we can reintroduce the area. Uh, re Uh, Sarika as well as in Panna. And uh, we can also restock the tigers in areas where the tigers are in low density, but still they have uh, the possibility that, that they, we can increase the uh, tiger density. And another uh, management initiative uh, that has been taken uh, is uh, uh, for the management of the, uh, we can say, tigers, is set up a special tiger protection force because. Uh, we have realized that the importance of the tiger protection in overall biodiversity conservations. It's not like we are protecting the tigers, but we are protecting the entire biodiversity itself. And realizing this, that protecting the tiger means protecting the entire biodiversity. The Ministry of the Finance has you know, also special uh, initiatives and they have constituted the special tiger, uh, tiger uh, protection force. And uh, they have also provided uh, some grants for the, we can say, to the National Tiger Cons uh, Conservation Authority that how they can uh, raise, arm and deploy the Special Tiger Cons Conservation Protection Force in uh, Tiger Reserves. And initially this uh, uh, Special Tiger Protection Force had been started uh, on pilot basis in, I can say, in the 13 uh, Tiger Reserves and I have listed it and uh, I don't think so, I, I have to read it. 
and another uh, important initiatives that are very very necessary if we really want to conserve uh, the tigers is uh, village re relocations for the creation of inviolate space and uh, why we need relocations although the peoples are there for 100 and 100 years but why we need relocations because uh, the uh, available data on research and uh, tiger ecology as well as uh, population habitat environment analysis indicate that to maintain a viable tiger population of uh, 80 to 100 uh, tigers in a tiger zoo, so we uh, need 800 to 1200 scares of inviolate forest area uh, is the prerequisite. So creating those inviolate space for the tigers and uh, other wildlife species. It's not like that we are creating the space only for the uh, tigers. We are creating the space for the other wildlife species. And uh, we also uh, focus on the overall development of the local communities has been done as one of the priority activity of the National Tiger Conservation Authority. And this uh, voluntary village local relocation program has been implemented in several tiger reserves across the countries with the two main objectives that how we are going to empower the local communities by giving access uh, to deal to development opportunities and how we are actually going to create the inviolate space uh, for the tiger so that both can uh, occur or live in harmony and uh, according to uh, MUA statistics of 2020 there are 41,000 families in 49 six village across 50 tigers reserves and around uh, 18,500 families across 215 villages have been relocated and another like that's why i've already talked about this that tiger conservation plan for better managers and uh, uh, in the amendment of the wildlife protection act in th section 38 it's mandatory for every tiger reserves there that they should have a tiger conservation plans and uh, because uh, in this tiger conservation plan every managers needs to uh, give that how they are going uh, to protect the tiger reserves how they are going to uh, adopt the different uh, specific we can say habitat inputs for maintaining a viable uh, population of the tigers crow predators as well as the different prey animal species and another thing in this tiger conservation plan that in this they also need to address that, that how they are actually uh, only uh, focusing on the tiger reserves is not enough that how they are going to connect the tiger reserves with the other protected areas or how they are going to connect the tiger reserves with the other tiger reserves it's also need to be uh, to be done in the tiger conservation plans and uh, it has been found that out of 52 tiger reserves uh, the tiger conservation plans. This is statistics come from the NTCA website that the 35 tiger reserves uh, have been approved by the NTCA because whenever that is tiger conservation plan is the ultimate authority to approve the tiger conservation plan uh, is uh, NTCA and the 35 tiger conservation plan uh, has been approved by the NTCA and uh, rest are under preparation or scrutiny on, uh, with the NTCA. Another important initiative uh, for the, we can say, management of the tiger reserves in India is setting up tiger conservation foundations. And it is also mandatory uh, for each tiger reserves uh, to establish a tiger conservation uh, foundations. And because an objective of this tiger conservation foundation is to support the tiger reserve management uh, for conservation of the tigers as well as the associated biodiversity and one important things that they need to address is how they can take up the eco development initiatives uh, through people participation because participation of the peoples for every conser uh, conservation related activity is very very important and these are the, some of the uh, objectives of the uh, tiger conservation foundations that it's uh, facilitate uh, economic, social, and cultural development. The tiger reserves. It also need to does how they actually uh, promote the ecotourism with the active involvement of the local peoples and the local stakeholders. And it also need to mobilize the final resources that how they can regulate the uh, entry fees. And because previously what happened, what why there was a need of the tiger conservation uh, foundation because previously uh, there is no provision that if someone wants to donate some things to the tiger, particular tiger reserves, the, they, they don't have provision to take those that money but to this tiger conservation foundations everyone can donate to the tiger reserves and that uh, money can directly goes for the different activities for research for eco development activities for environmental education for training and all these things and uh, this tcf this tiger conservation foundations have been uh, constituted uh, for most of the tiger reserves 
and uh, it's not like that that only national uh, we have to address the uh, to protect the tigers we need to address the money the tigers in india but we also have a uh, international initiatives for tiger conservations we have a uh, different mou and uh, protocols with nepal china bangladesh myanmar in spite of all these things we have also a uh, member of global tiger farms uh, of tiger range countries that has been uh, created actually to address the international issues related to the tiger conservation another important thing the management initiatives that has been taken uh, by the ntca for the management of tigers in india immunizations around tiger reserves because there are some uh, media coverage that uh, in 2013 uh, that uh, the canine distemper virus has been spread in uh, tiger range countries like indonesia and russia because this disease uh, has uh, causing some kind of high fever uh, diarrhea vomiting paralysis and ultimately death so uh, by taking some kind of uh, preventive measures the ntca uh, has uh, given a guidelines to the uh, manager of the tiger reserves that uh, they there should be a program of immunizations uh, around the tiger reserves regarding cattle Uh, cats and dogs and whenever there is any incidents of the animal animals showing some kind of the abnormal behaviors uh, it must be reported immediately and they, it's also necessary to collect the dead animal collections for uh, different analyses and there is also need to check uh, water quality in tiger reserves particularly in pre and post monsoon seasons and one this important thing uh, that is I, i can say is very very important if we really want to protect the tigers that connecting tiger population for long term conservation and although uh, ntca has taken a lot of initiatives uh, for the tiger conservations but to uh, to safeguard all these initiatives and to safeguard all these conservation efforts the uh, for the long term survival of the tigers or the, for the future survival of the tigers it is very very important uh, that tiger population remain connected with each others by means of uh, corridors because these corridors ensure uh, genetic exchange through dispersals and corridors also serve as a we can say some kind of uh, uh, guard against extinctions caused by the environmental man made factors and by addressing this on the basis of the uh, survey during the assessment of the tiger prey Uh, and its habitat assessment done by the wi scientists in 2006 and 2010 in different tiger landscapes they have prepared that how in ti different tiger landscapes uh, we, we are we can connect the uh, tigers with one another or we can connect the tigers with other uh, protected areas and these are the four identified uh, we can say tiger landscape that uh, wi has identified and in which they have proposed uh, we can say that uh, these uh, corridors and this is the one the raja they have proposed the raja ji corbet tiger uh, co uh, raja ji corbet uh, corridors they also proposed uh, corbet dudwa then they have proposed dudwa how we can connect the dudwa kishipur and kataniya ghat and similarly in central indian landscape they have proposed the how we can connect the uh, tiger population in uh, central indian landscapes in western ghats in uh, northeast landscapes and why we are much much more concerned uh, about the connecting the populations and uh, this has given us an idea that why we need to protect uh, the corridors why there is need of the corridors and this study has been published in january uh, 2020 by the from the wi scientist and in which uh, the title of the study is uh, long term uh, long distance dispersal by male severed adult tiger in human dominant landscapes and this study give us some insight that how the functional corridor is important for the survival of the long range species particularly if we talk about the tigers and what they did actually they captured and uh, collared one uh, several male tigers in 2019 fitted it with the gps collars and they monitored the dispersal for two and uh, one uh, two to five days from uh, january 2019 to january 2020 and what they find that the when the tiger disperse from their native place to the dispersal sites in a totally human dominated landscapes and uh, they move uh, during the dispersal phase a distance of about 2000 kilometers and uh, the total distance they have traveled from to, uh, if Uh, I can say the cumulative distance of uh, pre dispersals, dispersal, and post uh, dispersal. They have uh, traveled more than three uh, thousand kilometers, and this kind of informations 
uh, regarding the dispersal of the species like tigers give us an information that how long distance dispersal provide uh, knowledge and helps identify the different functional corridors that are crucial uh, for designing uh, conservation policies for large range uh, species like tigers and this is the uh, map that they have shown in their slide that the, they have started from uh, the Anganga wildlife century uh, sub adults and, uh, and his dispersers at uh, the Peshwar wildlife century. And this is uh, the, the, how many tiger reserves we have uh, in India. We have 52 tiger reserves. I think uh, 53 uh, have been proposed uh, in uh, Chhattisgarh and uh, Gurgasidas uh, tiger reserves. Uh, and this is the latest statistics that I have taken from the NTCA National Tiger Conservation Authority. And another important initiative because when this tiger force uh, had been set up, it has also been given, given the talks that how we can uh, do the tiger censuses with modern technologies, with the refined technologies. And this tiger census uh, is one, I can say, is one of the important uh, uh, management initiatives uh, for the long term conservation of the tigers. Because uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, NTCA actually collaborate with different forest departments. Uh, with uh, conservation NGOs as well as coordinated by the Wildlife Institute of India, and they actually uh, conduct a national assessment for uh, for the status of the tigers, pro predators, and prey and their habitats uh, every four years since then, after the 2006 exercise and after the recommendation of the uh, we can say Tiger Task Force. And this first uh, assessment, based on scientific methodology, was done in 2006, and subsequently uh, it was repeated in 2010, 2014 and in 2018 and uh, some of the things that we can that we get through these monetary size to tiger senses is uh, uh, it's not only the numbers it's not only the tiger numbers the tiger census is not only the tiger numbers but by doing this kind of exercises we get a lot of information like how we can uh, we can get the information regarding uh, tiger landscape conservation plans we can get from these tiger numbers we can also uh, designate and notify the inviolate uh, critical core and buffer areas for the tiger reserves we can also identify and declare the new tiger reserves we can also recognize the tiger landscapes and importance of the corridors and their physical demarcations. Just like the studies, uh, uh, the, the corridors that have been proposed by the WI scientists based on the survey of 2006 and 2010. That's, that's, it's not, that's why I'm talking about it's not only the number. It gives a lot of information that we can use uh, for the tiger conservation itself. And it, uh, we can also, uh, by these senses, we can also prioritize the conservation investments because a big area needs more money, more conservation efforts than others. Then we can uh, use our investments in the target uh, areas. And all these, we can say, uh, provide us an opportunity to incorporate uh, conservation objectives that actually be supported with a sound science based uh, data. And this is the, we can say, uh, Tiger Census report of 2018, in which that how we, we have doubled the Tiger numbers from 2006 census to 2018. And in, they have, in this chart, I have uh, given the uh, Tiger's numbers in different Tiger landscapes. It has in uh, Shivali Hills, we have two nine. Uh, salmon in 2006 and 2018 we have 646 similarly in central indian landscapes we have 6101 in 2006 but we have uh, tiger numbers in 2018 census it's uh, 1033 similarly in western ghat landscapes we have 402 and in uh, we can say uh, 2008 census were 9981 and in north hill, hill states we have 100 and we have uh, uh, 219 in 2018 uh, census and similar uh, in sundarbans although in sundarbans 2006 the survey was not conducted it was conducted in uh, 2010 and in 70s in 2010 in 88 in we can say uh, 2018 reports and overall why i'm talking it's a success story that uh, overall in, uh, uh, in 2006 census uh, we have the tiger census report reported 1411 tigers and within this space we have doubled the tiger numbers 2967 and this uh, four cycle of uh, national tiger uh, status covered uh, 3,81,400 uh, kilometers of the forested habitats in 20 states of india and it is uh, i believe that it's the world largest effort invested uh, in any wildlife survey till date 
and it has also been in the 2018 survey has also been uh, get uh, recognized in genius world records as a world largest camera tips camera trap survey of the wildlife and in this 2008 survey it has also been uh, said that tigers have increasing the rate of 8% per annum uh, from 2006 to 2018 and uh, in spite of all these things uh, we have uh, uh, the global leaders because in global tiger forms the global leaders also uh, our global leaders committed uh, in the global tiger form in uh, St. Uh, Petersburg in Russia that we can double the tiger number uh, in 2022. But India has uh, did this work in 2018 and in spite of, uh, we can say we have uh, four years ahead of uh, doubling the tiger numbers uh, of 22, 2022 targets. So it's it's, it's, a, it's a, some kind of lesson for uh, for the entire world that we can, that, that, that how we can better manage the tiger reserves. So by realizing this, that the uh, government of India uh, and how much the wildlife or how much a tiger is important for us that even the, our prime minister uh, itself released the tiger status books of 2018 and it has shown that the government has a very strong commitment uh, to conserve this iconic species with several of the management initiatives uh, that have discussed with you regarding amendments protections voluntary locations in wildlife space uh, tiger conservation for foundations immunization programs and many other uh, things and these uh, management initiatives uh, i can say is a very very critical uh, in securing the survival of the tiger populations uh, the biodiversity and the uh, ecosystem services the forests they inhibit and uh, tiger as a top predator and as a key tool species actually also gave an uh, as an idea of the healthy tiger population reflects the overall health of the particular environments and these conservation efforts that i discussed with you to protect the tigers can actually contribute to the preservation of the healthy and healthy herbivore populations healthy healthy herbivore population means other carnivore species and ultimately it's uh, give uh, the entire ecosystems uh, functional so guys this is uh, so all of uh, this is about my two days presentations hope i have not taken much of your times and thanks uh, for bearing me in these uh, uh, last